Welcome back to Art Around the World with Mrs. Suarez. We are going to jump back into our exploration of the country of Greece this week and I'm so excited for this week's projects. We know that the Greeks were known for having functional art. That is pieces of artwork that could actually be used just like we studied the vases a couple of weeks ago that were beautifully designed but also functional. They would use them for day to day. They weren't just used as art to sit on display but they were actually used. Well they took this art form even into the style of boats that they made. The Greeks are really known for a specific style of boat that they would use in battle and exploration called a trireme. Now a trireme boat is unique because instead of just being like a sailboat with a sail that is blown by the wind, they would have oars or paddles where people could row so that they could continue to navigate even if the wind wasn't blowing in the direction they needed to go. So this week we're going to look at three different options for how you can create your own version of a Greek trireme boat. The first option is going to be to draw and design your own Greek trireme boat. Uh, we're going to add some cool artistic waves at the bottom and you can choose how you want to color this in. You can use paint, colored pencils, or crayons. The second option is really fun uh, but definitely a little bit more time consuming. If you want to attempt to make a Greek style mosaic. We're going to do a mosaic of the trireme boat here where we cut small pieces of paper and glue them down together um, just like they would have done with stones or tiles to make mosaic artwork in Greece. The third option is origami. This one is definitely the most time consuming. You have to be very careful when doing this that you can follow all of the steps. It's not difficult if you follow step by step in the directions that I'm going to show you and this is really cool even though this is made out of paper, you can set this on water and see it sail for a little bit, which is pretty neat about this option, or you can leave it on display somewhere at your house. But we're gonna make a origami style trireme Greek boat. For the first version of how to make your own Greek trireme, we're gonna start with the most basic option. All you'll need for this is a piece of paper, something to draw with, like a pencil, a pen. It would be helpful if you have a permanent marker, some kind of permanent marker. And if you wanna leave it black and white, you can just leave it there. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how to add color with two different techniques. We'll do regular watercolor painting and we'll also, um, I'll demonstrate again for you, how to use washable markers to draw on your paper and then paint over it with just plain water and how it causes the washable markers to bleed and spread almost like a watercolor paint would do. So first we have to start with the shape of the boat. So I'm going to draw the shape of the boat and it's important to remember that the triremes were typically pretty long, thin boats. So I'm gonna draw a long curved line um, and then I'll draw the bottom of it as well. It's also important to note that the significance in this Greek style of boat was that unlike a sailboat, yes, it has a sail, it's going to have a big sail right here, um, but it also used oars, usually wooden oars, uh, and people would row them so that even if there wasn't wind blowing in the direction they wanted to go, they could still navigate and get around. So I'm going to now add the section here where you're going to see all the oars, like paddles, coming out of the boat where men used to sit and row the boat. Next, I'm going to draw a large sail in the back of the boat and a smaller sail in the front of the boat. Now that I have my boat all sketched out, I'm gonna go ahead and go over it with some sort of permanent marker. If you have a fine tip one, that will be a lot easier to do the smaller lines and details. Uh, and then I'm going to actually fill it in, certain parts of it, with a thicker Sharpie marker, a thicker permanent marker. And here you'll also see me add a couple of designs as I'm shading it in. Now that I've finished outlining and coloring in my ship with just a black permanent marker, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rings around where the water would be, where the paddles or the oars enter the water. And then I'm gonna draw some water in the background. You can add clouds, a sun, whatever you want to in the background, but you definitely need to add water or else it doesn't make sense that your ship is floating. I made my waves have a lot of designs and patterns in them, trying to make it look like it was stormy. Um, so I have waves going all different directions and I kind of put these thick black lines in it to make it look darker, like it's maybe, you know, stormy outside. Um, but now I'm gonna show you how to add the color. And I wanna remind you again, you can either use um, washable markers 
and you add the markers and then paint over it with water to kind of blend it like watercolors. You could paint it with actual watercolor paints or if you like it black and white, you can always leave it like this if you don't have crayons, colored pencils. It's your artwork, so it's however you want to color it in. Um, and then I'm gonna do my sky probably with uh, sunset colors. So I'm gonna use pinks, reds, oranges, and yellows, the, the colors that you see normally at sunset. Um, to contrast with the blue, the dark blues and greens I'm gonna have in my water. And for my ship, uh, you could make your ship brown if you want to. I think I'm gonna leave my ship just black and white because I think it will be a nice contrast from the color in the water and in the background to have a black and white ship so that it really stands out, especially since a lot of the patterns that I have drawn right now kind of are causing my ship to blend in with the ocean. I want it to be able to stand out so that it's the first thing that you see when you look at the picture. Now I do wanna start by just demonstrating how to do this uh, washable marker water technique. I have shown it in previous videos, but just in case you didn't see it, I do want to demonstrate it. So I'm just going to choose a wave. I'll do this big one. Um, I'm going to take my washable markers and I'm going to just start coloring in a little bit of the wave. Now this marker is a little dried out, so it's not working great, but it will be good once we add the water and then I'll add some green as well to that wave. Okay, you can see that as I'm adding color, I'm kind of intentionally leaving some white spaces there on that wave because I want to show you how that space will get filled in once I start painting over it with water. So see this is just clear water um, and a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush you can also do this using q-tips would work. Um, it's kind of hard to paint with your finger when it comes to water because not a lot is going to stick to your water so if you have a paintbrush or a q-tip that's going to be the easiest. So I'm going to go ahead and just brush over my washable markers. And those colors, what's gonna happen is the colors from the marker are going to start to bleed with the water. So they're gonna start, to, I could even spread this to other places, but the color is going to bleed and blend together. So right now it's really wet, so it's kind of making it look a little bit more dull. But you can see now where I left those white spaces, there's no more white spaces. And the trouble is I added a lot of water, so now it's blending into my sky. But I'll cover over that once I add my um, sky color. So I just wanted to show you that this is an option if you want to use washable markers if you don't have paint but you have washable markers this is a fun way that you can kind of like paint with just water over top of the washable markers um, if you have regular paint colored pencils however you want to color this in go ahead and do that We are done with option number one. This just has to dry and now we're gonna move on to our next option. For our next option this week, we are going to make a mosaic style trireme Greek boat. And for this option, you're gonna need a little bit more supplies than for the last one. So we definitely need a piece of paper, something to write with or draw with. Uh, like a pencil. Uh, you're gonna need glue. A glue stick would work really well, but if you have this kind of glue, if you have um, squeezable glue, if you have a paintbrush to spread it on your paper, that will make it easier, but you can also get a little messy and spread it with your fingers as well. You're going to need scissors and some colorful paper. Now, we're gonna need some specific colors for this. I, as I've mentioned before, only happen to have yellow and blue construction paper at my house, but that's good because I know a lot of you don't have different color paper. So you can always take a piece of white paper and color it in. I did this with paint, but you can color it in with crayons, colored pencils, try to color in almost the whole sheet of paper. You're gonna want brown probably for your ship. You're going to want a blue or a mixture of blue and green together for your water or your ocean. And then you're gonna want colors for your sunset. So anything like pink, red, orange, or yellow, I did them all on the same sheet of paper. If you have construction paper that's those colors, you can use that. If you have just plain white paper, you can always color it in using crayons or you could paint it in and then you have to let it dry. So I did this about an hour ago so that my paper would be nice and dry for this project. Our very first step is going to be to take our just plain white paper and a pencil and just draw a really um, basic outline. We want to have our trireme boat with our sails and water and if you do this with pencil it's going to be best because we're going to end up covering all of this up. This is just so that you have a basic outline once we start adding our mosaic pieces. Again, this is just a rough sketch, so it doesn't really matter how messy this is. So you can see that I kind of drew my boat one size and then I decided to make it curve up some more and I didn't erase those lines because we're going to end up covering all of this with our mosaic pieces, which is what I'm going to show you next. To create your mosaic pieces, you're going to take your colored paper and you're going to cut it into some small squares. So it might help if you fold it uh, because then you'll just be cutting double at the same time. So I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna start by cutting long strips of paper. Okay, so now I cut two at a time. 
And once you have some of those long strips, you're next going to take those strips and I can stack them all up together. And you're going to start cutting them into squares, small squares, like this. Now you can also cut some of them as triangles. So I'm gonna cut this one into square and then I'm going to cut it again to make it into tri a triangle. Because with these mosaic pieces, we're going to be fitting them together, kind of putting them down on our paper. Um, and if a square is too big, you might have to cut some pieces to be a smaller square or a smaller triangle to fit into different places. So I'm gonna do the same thing with all of my different colors and I'm gonna leave them in piles. So I'm gonna make a nice pile of yellow mosaic pieces, uh, blue mosaic pieces, all of my different colors. Now that we have all of our different colors cut out, I wanna start with my ship. So I'm going to start with my brown and black pieces, placing them down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the parts that I want to start adding my mosaic tiles to with a thin layer of glue. You don't want the glue to be too wet because uh, it will get really messy, but I'm gonna put a little bit of glue down and then I'm gonna spread it around with my paintbrush. And make sure you wash your paintbrush as soon as you're done so you don't ruin it um, or your Q-tip, whatever you're using, kind of rinse it off in between using your glue or else the glue will harden to it. I know you can't see it, but now I have a thin layer of glue spread all over my boat. And it's okay if you go outside of the lines because we have those guiding lines there, not for the gluing part, but so that when we start adding our pieces of our boat, that we don't go outside of the lines too much. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking these little tiny squares and I'm making my boat brown because they would have been made mostly out of wood. And I'm gonna start adding these pieces along my boat. So you can leave little spaces in between to make it a more authentic mosaic. So you can see I'm starting to line my boat. It almost looks like I'm building a boat out of bricks. I did cut some pieces that are a lot thinner and smaller so that I could go up the sides where it is thinner and smaller. And you're gonna notice, oh, I'm gonna get to a point where I just have a little triangle. I need to find a piece that's that triangle, but easier than trying to search through all of my pieces, I can just take a square piece and my scissors and I can cut it to be the size that I need for that space. So I'm gonna kind of look at what size I need. I'm gonna cut a triangle that can pretty much fit that space perfectly or at least close to perfectly. And I'm gonna go outside the lines a little bit, but that's okay. You can now see I have a nice little tip to my boat. So I'm gonna to continue to fill this in with my pieces. Now that you can kind of start to see how the mosaic tiles, which we made out of paper, are starting to work, I'm just gonna let you know, you could fill in your sail any color you want to. I think because the rest of the paper is gonna be filled with colors, I'm gonna go ahead and leave my sail white, which means I am gonna go back and erase that one line that I have drawn there. Next, I'm going to start filling in my water down at the bottom. So for this, I'm gonna use my blue tiles and my bluish green aqua tiles as well to fill in. I'm definitely going to have to curve some pieces to fit into the waves properly and make some triangle pieces for the tips of the waves. Remember, before I start placing down my tiles, I do need to add glue and spread it around. You might have noticed in my last video that as I was adding these little pieces for the border of my sail, um, the glue had already dried. So I, what I was doing is I was just adding a little bit of glue to my finger and then getting each little tiny piece moist with the glue before I stuck it to the paper. Now that I have my boat complete with my mosaic tiles and my water and waves complete with my mosaic tiles, I'm going to use my sunset colors to create a pink and orange sky. And I'm going to try to do a semi-circle behind the boat to be my sun and maybe some yellow rays of sun as well. All right, and now you can see I've filled in pretty much all of the holes. Now remember, when you're doing a mosaic, the tiles don't need to overlap. It's good to leave some of that white space in between them, but we are officially done with option two, which is our mosaic version of the Greek triremes.
For option three, we're going to make an origami version of the Greek trireme boats. Now this version is a little bit harder to make. It doesn't have to be difficult as long as you follow step by step the directions that I'm going to show you. Take your time and follow the directions perfectly so that you don't mess up. So you're going to need to start by taking a piece of paper and making a perfect square. So you can do this by folding it in half like I've just shown you and then cutting off the extra rectangle. If you fold it back and forth, you don't need scissors, but it's much easier if you have scissors and you can cut that extra rectangle off, which we are gonna then save for later. Our next step is going to be to take the square and fold it in half diagonally again. That way you have two creases that go through your paper that form an X. Then you're gonna take each one of the corners and fold it to the center of that X, as you can see I'm doing now. So I'm taking every corner and folding it to the center, which is going to give me a smaller square when I finish. You can see I have a crease that goes down the center of my square. I'm then going to take my edges of my square and fold them towards the center, making a smaller rectangle that can open from the center. Our rectangle has a crease that runs right in the center. We're going to open up one of the flaps and take the edge of the flap and fold it down onto that crease. We're going to do the same on the other side and as you're going to see, it's going to cause the edge of our rectangle to pop up and become three dimensional. Now we're gonna take the longest edge that's standing up and we're going to fold it down towards that center crease again. And this is going to form a trapezoid shape with the top of our paper. We are then just going to repeat the exact same steps on the opposite side. Next, we're going to flip our paper over, revealing that we have a square on the back. We're going to take the edges of that square and fold them towards the center crease. Then we're going to fold the other side down as well. Once again, we're going to flip it over and now we're going to undo the edges or pick up the edges to open it up. You'll see that there's kind of an X again in the center and we're gonna take the point of one of those X's and fold it up and then crease it the opposite direction so that it forms a trapezoid shape. Repeat those same steps on the other side to make another trapezoid. Next, you'll see two triangular flaps on the inside that you can gently start to pull out. Now be careful that it doesn't unfold all of your creases, but you do want to uh, pull gently until it's all the way out. The center folds and design should remain intact. Next, simply repeat on the opposite side. Now flip it over and take the top point and fold it to the center and the bottom point and fold it to the center, as you can see here. Then take the final flap and also fold it towards the center. Now you can see we have formed a small square. We're going to take that square's outer edge and fold it towards the center crease. We're going to repeat those first two steps on the opposite side now, folding over the top and the bottom tip towards the center of the square. Now here's where we change what we're going to do. Instead of taking this final flap and folding it towards the center, instead we're going to take the edge of that triangle and fold it towards the center, making a point at the end. And then we're gonna do the same with the top. We're gonna to take that edge and fold it in towards the center, making it almost looks like the front of a paper airplane. Our next step is to take this entire piece and fold it in half, kind of like a taco. Make sure you fold right on the crease and make that fold very, very firm, going over it with your fingers. At the bottom of our folded piece, you'll see a small rectangle. That's where you're going to need to hold firmly as you pull with your other fingers, pinching your thumb to the rest of your fingers to pull out the top or the front of our boat. Then we'll repeat that same action on the other side. We'll hold firmly onto that rectangle while we pull the paper uh, to form the back of our boat. It's going to be released from underneath the boat as you pinch it and pull it firmly. 
going to finish off our boat by folding down the neck, the tall part at the front of the boat, about halfway down so that it points forward. Make sure that you've pulled out everything from that rectangle at the bottom because if it comes back in, it will, won't look like a boat anymore. Now that our boat has form, we're going to make sure that it can stand up on its own. We're going to do this by folding back these two flaps, triangular flaps, that kind of make feet. Now we are done with the body of our boat, we're going to move on to the mast. That's that tall pole that holds the sail in the middle. We're going to take that extra piece of paper that we saved for later and fold it in half twice to make a thick rectangle. Next, we need to cut a rectangle out of white paper to be our sail. You don't have to use white paper, but it should definitely contrast with the color that you use for your boat. Next, place your mast in the center of your white sail so that you can mark two vertical lines about one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom of your sail. Take your scissors and cut open those lines. Just leave a little slit. It doesn't need to be a hole, just a small slit where you can insert your mast. Now that our sail and our boat are done, all that's left to do is to attach them. You can slide your sail directly into your boat, but it will help if you add a little bit of glue or some kind of adhesive like tape so that it stays in there very firmly. And then you are officially done with option three. Thanks for joining me again today. I hope you have so much fun creating these amazing Greek style trireme boats. Um, no matter what option that you choose to do, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun making it.